Fantastic. Okay. Well, very good afternoon to you people. I hope you're all well and in fine fettle. A happy belated uh, New Year to you as well. I'm very sorry I couldn't make last week for those of you who are expecting to tune in then. Um, I was ill. I had a rather nasty cough and I'm pretty sure that you didn't want to hear me coughing and spluttering over the microphone. So we thought that we would reshed in and tuning in. And um, today I'll be talking about set and forget trading. How to make money while you sleep whilst trading. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I know we've got a few familiar faces in the room. Um, my name's Robert Colville, also known as The Lazy Trader. I run a set and forget um, trader trading service, and my speciality as a trader is simply end of day or end of week trading, where I just simply place my orders with my broker if I see a setup um, which I like the look of, and I simply walk away and enjoy the finer things in life rather than spending all my days, hours hunched over a screen waiting for a trade to happen, because that, not, that isn't much fun, is it? Let's be honest now. And if you are having fun watching a screen in the daytime, then I, I can honestly say that you might be in the wrong profession. <laughs> but without further ado, let us talk about this. I mean, regardless of the fact that I'm talking about the daily and the weekly as a default time frame, you can apply the following terminology and uh, principles to any time frame, whether it's the hourly or the four hourly. Okay, so without further ado, um, set and forget trading, how to make money while you're asleep. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a strategy today which you can implement um, immediately, really, and um, you can apply it to any asset class, any time frame. It works for me, so I'm pretty sure it'll work for you as well. And this is something which I, I teach to my uh, clients on the website. It's, um, well, if you really want to sound pretentious, it's supply and demand trading. Well, actually, um, we've renamed it Power Zones, and it's essentially looking for key levels of support and resistance and anticipating huge moves off the back of that. Okay, so before we progress, I just want you to curse your eyes over this disclaimer, just the legal bit. And um, so supply and demand trading, how to really identify trades of high profit potential. Um, We're going to be talking in granular detail, actually, about this strategy. We're going to talk about the selection, timing, management, and of course, we're going to apply it to a few examples. And then after that, I'm going to apply it to the actual market right now, um, because there's no point in just um, looking at picture-perfect examples, really. So without further ado, I really like this style of trading, and it has many benefits. Not only does it mean that we can get into huge moves at the very beginning without waiting for price action, um, by virtue of the fact that we're able to piggyback um, the big banks, the bigger players in the market, with having our orders in a similar vicinity to them. Um, We can move our stop loss to break even faster and essentially benefit from a free trade. It means that we can essentially identify key levels of support resistance that the big big dogs, as I say, banks and institutions are likely to have their orders, fewer barriers to entry, higher reward to risk, and it really does epitomize a set of forget trading without having to worry about trailing every day like you would if you're trading uh, price action. Um, it doesn't require indicators, and it's universal. For apply, can be applied to any asset class, really, and you can really trade it objectively. There's not really much scope for you to go wrong, really, as you'll discover for yourself. Um, the downside, of course, for those of you who are slightly impatient, is the fact that there are typically fewer opportunities in the marketplace to trade, and certainly the fact that we don't have many rules for entry Okay, sure, we're quite specific in what we're looking for, but the fact that we have fewer rules might create that all crippling fear-based disposition um, where people might just um, feel that they don't want to get into the trade in the eye of the storm as and when the trade's about to happen. Then, of course, sod's law, they don't get into it, and it's a winning trade. You know, damned if you do, damned if you don't sometimes. Okay, so before we get into the pith of this webinar, I just really want to bulldoze this terminology. Levels of supply and demand, they essentially mean the same as support and resistance. So a level of supply is a sell level. It's a level of resistance where long positions uh, amongst the bigger players in the market are typically unwound and dissolved and then sellers are anticipated to be coming into the market thereafter. This would typically happen at a big number or a big horizontal level. Um, No coincidence that these kind of two um, elements typically tie in hand in hand. Um, Also, they're known as a ceiling, a horizontal level, you know, resistance. They pretty much uh, mean the same thing depending on who you subscribe to, really. So they all mean the same thing. And this is one thing that a lot of people come and stuck on. They, when it comes to price action, and various terminology in the markets, people essentially are talking about the same thing, 
but with different names, and a lot of people come unstuck with this. Okay, so one thing to remember is the supply level um, is essentially a level of resistance. And on the flip side, you've probably guessed it already, um, a level of demand is a buy level, it's a level of support where we can simply anticipate buyers coming into the market, um, also known as a level of support, a floor, or simply a horizontal level, um, nice and easy. So a level of demand is typically a buy level, and a level of supply is typically a sell level. Okay, so that's it really. So um, just to really kind of like iron out these um, kinks, if you like, before we get into the strategy in earnest, um, what you want to do in terms of selection and uh, waiting for a decent setup to occur is we want price action to be approaching a hard, what we call a hard level of support or resistance. And this can be more acutely seen um, on the daily and the weekly time frame because on those higher order time frames, uh, price action is much more established. It's a lot uh, smoother. Uh, well, I say that I'm not including <laughs> the spike created as a result of the SMB last week. That's an anomaly, a black swan event. But essentially, by and large, on the daily, weekly, and monthly time frames, price action is a lot more stable. And this is what we want. We want these well-established horizontal levels which are strong, and we can reasonably expect a reaction off the back of it. Okay, so when I say a hard level of supply, I mean a level which is held for at least 10 months. And on the flip side, a level of demand, again, it's a level which hasn't been broken for 10 months. It's held for that long. It's been tested at least twice, and it's held for 10 months to a year. Okay? So some of you might be wondering, why the higher order time frames? That requires a lot of patience and discipline. Well, guess what? It certainly does. Um, but the reason it, I, I, I would not have it any other way. I mean, the higher order time frames, the daily, weekly, and the monthly, they give us a sound market perspective. Price action is better established. Um, you, you can essentially have a much safe distance to your entry and your stop loss. And uh, we can really just enter these big moves and walk away safe in the knowledge that we don't have to watch and micromanage our trade like you would if you're trading the hourly or, God forbid, the 50-minute time frame. Okay, so just a real simple example here. Um, we can see that we've got a level of demand here, a buy level. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse moving uh, from side to side. Hopefully you can. Um, but this is typically what we refer to as a buy level after two tests providing it's over the course of 10 months minimum, and this is a level of supply also known as a sell level. So when we get an established range in this case, where we've got two levels of supply and demand, which has been uh, formed over 10 months, the third bounce on the level of supply is the opportunity, and if we get a bounce on the level of demand, um, that's an opportunity as well to buy. So the opportunity is always in the third bounce, so we're looking at a horizontal level which has never been broken before. Okay, so just to recap here, because I know that I'm giving quite a bit of information in a very short space of time. So what we look at for um, a buy setup is simply um, a level of demand, okay, which is a level of um, a level which has been tested for at least 10 months, two tests at least, and no close below the horizontal level. Okay, a level of demand is a support level, aka a buy level, and just to recap quickly, a sell trade, um, a sell setup is a level of resistance, also known as a level of supply. Once again, it's a level which has been held for 10 months, two previous tests of rejection, and no close above it. As soon as we get a level of resistance which has been closed above it, it's invalid, unfortunately. But there are lots of cases, like for example, in this case here, we've got pound against the um, Canadian dollar. We've got a very well established range here. We've got uh, two tests here on this horizontal level um, of um, supply, also known as a level of resistance. And there we've got the opportunities on the third, fourth, and fifth test. And you can just simply place an order on the level with a stop loss using your discretion 50 to 150 pips away. Remember, we've got this whole range potentially as a target, so there's high reward to risk um, in your favor here. On the flip side as well, we've got two tests on this level of demand here, this buy level. Um, the two tests, the second test validates it as a horizontal level, and the third test is our opportunity to buy roundabout here. Okay, so um, again, we've got Aussie Swiss. Um, <laughs> 
please ignore the big spike which we've uh, seen recently. This is a, a chart which has been taken before the SMB decided to, uh, well, really kind of like uh, mess the whole market up. Um, we've got the hard levels, as you can see here, where we've got two tests on this level of resistance here. Also, as a level of supply opportunity to sell on the third um, test and on this level of demand, demand zone, also known as a level of support. We've got uh, two tests here. We haven't got a buy opportunity because we've just been validated. This has just been validated as a level of uh, demand here with the second test. Okay, so typically hard levels, just for your information, um, occur at round numbers, multi-year highs and lows, whether it's a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year high or low, uh, or levels defended by the central bank, like that um, prosthetic one spot 200 level um, with the Euro Swiss um, currency pair defended by the, or was defended by the um, SMB before they decided to um, flamboyantly say, no, we're not bothering anymore last week, which caused that enormous spike, which I'm sure you've seen. Okay, so um, absolutely nothing wrong with cherry picking the best and uh, just waiting patiently for them. So um, I just want to really kind of make this clear here. The best levels of supply and demand are the ones where we have an isolated whiplash rejection of the level here, like so, where prices come, back, come up to the level and it's turned around rather quickly. And it hasn't really hesitated at all. It hasn't really been choppy around the level, testing it on multiple times in a short space of time. It's just gone to the level and it's respected it and it's turned around. They're the best ones where the tests are seldom, um, like for example, Pound New Zealand. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And um, we've got uh, numerous other examples which I'm going to tell you as well. FTSE as well um, is one of them. Okay, so you can see here um, for FTSE, surprise, surprise, we've got this test. Isolated whiplash test, great. We've got another isolated whiplash test here, great. And then a third time. These are the kind of tests we'd rather see rather than just price hovering just under the, um, the, the, the level, if it's a level of um, supply, for example. Okay, so the FTSE is on the watch list at the moment because really not much has happened in the FTSE over the past year and a half. It's just moved sideways and it's a simple case of selling the top of the range at the level of supply and we'll talk about that a little bit more deeply when the time comes okay so I'm just going to talk to you about this um, US dollar versus the Polish Zloty I don't know how many of you have bothered to even look at this chart but the way I see it, it doesn't really matter what the currency is um, it's a chart and we treat any chart no matter what it represents exactly the same way in terms of trading it technically and analyzing it at, from a technical perspective so here looking at it we've got the first test on this horizontal level we've got the second and then we've got the potential buy opportunity right here on the level. Um, coincidentally, it coincides with um, three spot 100 here, um, corresponds with the level, and typically we get the best levels corresponding with that. So please remember that the first test is setting the scene, the second test is a mere coincidence, and the third test is the opportunity. And on the flip side, with the FTSE, we've got the first test, a mere random event, the second test, a coincidence, and the third, well, it's our potential opportunity to sell. And of course, there's always this argument that, um, sure enough, the more times a level is tested, the weaker it becomes. Absolutely, I agree with that, but this is depending on the time frame where it's been testing. If it's tested, say, five times over the course of like three weeks, then yes, I'll be a bit worried. But if they're random isolated tests over the course of weeks and the months, then absolutely fantastic. This is what we want. These are, these are the kind of reaction zones where we can expect a bigger reaction. If it's just a, a congested zone where we're just seeing multiple testing on the level, almost as if it doesn't even matter, um, then we do need to pay attention and be a little bit more cautious. So, like I said earlier, the harder the time frame, the better. The daily and the weekly time frames give us a clearer market perspective. And the market structure is better established. The levels are far stronger and the bigger um, players in the market, the banks and the institutions, um, are trading those time frames. It's very seldom. And, I, and I've had numerous conversations with people who work behind the closed doors of these institutions. And it is an absolute myth entertained by the retail trader that Goldman Sachs are trading the five minutes time frame. I don't think so. And this has been <laughs> numerous sources have confirmed this. And they're, they're generally trading the higher time frames, getting these bigger picture setups, uh, which are the kind of like 
um, setups we want to piggyback as retail traders. Okay. And of course, we want to enter these setups with minimal effort as well. Of course, we are. This, this is typically this this uh, strategy is to do trend reversals, but trend trades different strategy, different day, different webinar. Okay. So the great thing about this strategy is we don't get emotional in the moment and place our order live with our broker. We simply place the orders and walk away. We don't want to jump into the market and just get all heated about it. In the moment, we just want to place our order with our broker at a particular point that if the market gets to it, we're in the trade. If it doesn't get to that point, we're not in the trade. The good thing about this is it removes the emotion out of it. And how many of you have you know, been wary of a setup? The setup's manifested itself. You're in the eye of the storm and fear has set in and you didn't place it after all for no particular reason. I think we're all guilty of that, quite frankly. Okay, so with this um, type of strategy, um, it's essential, of course, we have our entry, our stop loss, and our target. Okay, it's very important we have a stop loss um, because we want to get out of the trade automatically if the trade doesn't go away. And of course, we do get trades which don't go our way, and um, you know, no trade's going to go our way the whole time. But we want to be prepared for every eventuality rather than just simply um, a happy-go-lucky approach where we're risking our whole account on one trade because it looks good. We don't want to do that because sod's law, um, you'll blow it. Even if you make money and you're not risk managing, that's very dangerous because what that does is it tells you subconsciously that it's actually okay to do. It's not. Okay, so the management of this is very objective. Say, for example, you place your order just in advance of this level of demand here. We have, because sometimes price doesn't go down exactly to the level. Okay, so we want to capture the move just in advance of it. And we want to have our stop loss below the level, giving it a wide berth, 50 to 150 pips difference between our entry and our stop loss, just in case we do get price moving beyond it slightly. Sometimes you'll find that um, you get a false breakout and price will in the daytime spike below the level, only to close above it um, at the end of the day at the New York close. So um, typically, you need to ask yourself what kind of a trader you are. Are you somebody who would rather go for a higher probability um, and accept lower rewards for it than go for a slightly more conservative target? If you're simply just buying the bottom of the well-established range here, then it might be an idea just to simply cash all your chips in halfway um, up to the top of the range. If you uh, can accept a lower probability and are happy to get a higher reward um, in exchange for a lower probability, then go well, three quarters of the way up to the top of the range, that's absolutely fine. Or if you want the best of both worlds, you can scale out at your first target and leave half your position running. It's entirely up to you. And managing the trade is a very personal thing. A lot of you, I think psychologically, a lot of people would prefer to get a high probability um, outcome with a, a lower reward. Uh, I'd say that's better for our um, body and soul, quite frankly. So... On the flip side as well, if we're going for a short in the well-established range, we'd have our entry just slightly before the horizontal level and we'd have our stop loss above the level and would have a 50 to 150 uh, pip difference between our entry and our stop loss. Okay. Target one would be for the more conservative trader who wants a higher probability a trade outcome but would accept a, a lower reward for it. And target two would be for someone who can accept that actually, sure enough, there's a lesser probability of it hitting target, but if it does, you'll get a higher reward for it. There is this school of thought, and this is where a conservative trader would um, rather wait for a price action based setup at the top of the range. That's absolutely fine if you're more conservative. But a lot of the time, you'll find that, you know, market, the people, the key players in the market, they don't care about price action setups. All their orders are on horizontal levels. And they'll just buy and sell will and nilly, regardless of a high test bar, a doji, an evening star. You know, they don't care about that nonsense. They really don't. They'll just buy and sell regardless. And this is why, um, as I'll, I teach in a different webinar, building positions, building long-term positions, where you simply get into the trade at the start of the move, then you wait for a price action based setup and then you add to the position. Okay, but that's for a different webinar on a different day. Okay, so two objectives when we're a trader, 
The first objective is to uh, preserve our capital. That's absolutely um, essential. And this is the great thing about this strategy. We can essentially move our stop loss to break even quickly and get out the trade early if it's invalid or it becomes invalid. And we can lock in profit quickly and strategically. And I'll show you an objective way of doing that in just a second. Okay, so um, it's important for you to know when a setup becomes invalid. A lot of people, they're very quick to get into the, the trade and go all gung ho and entering it, but they're not so quick to realizing when the trade's going peak tong or, or uh, what's the other word for using it, going wrong, basically. <laughs> uh, so a nice, objective, easy way of doing this is say, for example, you're, you've bought on the level and you've got a close below, for example. That's an invalid setup. You do not want um, to get into the trade then. If you are in the trade, you want to get out of the trade if that happens. A close below the horizontal level invalidates the whole setup. Okay. So it gives us an early warning sign to exit without taking a full hit. Okay. So if I should say if you're looking to go short and um, there in fact is a close above the level, then that's not valid at all. We want to exit that before it gets to our stop loss. Sometimes we'll have to take a full hit, but it's always good to get out with the early warning signs, for example. But a good way of really getting this, nipping it in the bud if it goes wrong, is if we get a close below, we're looking to buy on this level of um, demand, and we get a close below it, and the next bar takes out the low of the bar, which closes below the horizontal level, then getting out early will save you and I know it's frustrating sometimes when you might have lost half a percent or half of whatever you risked, but you know it's far better to do that than um, taking a full hit. All right, so preserving our capital is absolutely key, and it's one of the most underrated things that we can do, really. Um, and a lot of people um, are very woeful in their ability to get this. All right, so um, that's how we can get out of a, a, a buy trade which is going wrong, and when we do get a close below this. Uh, level, the setup is completely invalid. We don't really want to pay any attention to this. For those price action heads in the room, then if anything, I'll wait for the extension to the downside and a pullback and a retest of this horizontal level. Anyway, let's move on because that's um, something we'll discuss another time. Okay, so on the flip side, when we're looking to go short of this level of supply, where we get a close above the level, not only does the level become invalid, we need to exit as soon as the next bar, after the bar which closes above the level, takes out the high. Okay, so this is our early warning sign if things go wrong. Okay, so this is just where, uh, this is just a reminder for you really. So just to quickly recap, if we have a buy, on this horizontal level, we get a close below the level and the next bar takes up the low, then we need to exit early. If we're selling yet, we get a close above the level of resistance and the next bar takes out the high, then we need to exit quickly, even if it is at a partial loss. Okay? So we're gonna talk about management here and it's important to really kind of trail, depending on the distance between your entry and your stop loss, it could be 50 pips, depending on your risk appetite, I'd obviously recommend a slightly bigger distance uh, than that, uh, say 100 to 150. Then for every 100 pips it moves in your favor, then you need to try your stop loss behind. Okay, so I mean, say for example, you, you've paid off your spread and you made 100 pips profit, then you can move your stop loss to break even. When you're 200 pips in profit, you can bank 100 pips. When you're 300 pips in profit, you can bank 200 pips, okay, uh, or you can just take profit. It's entirely up to you, but you can see here that we're trailing systematically and objectively um, according to how many pips difference between our entry and our stop loss. So we've got 100 pips difference here between our entry and our stop loss, and we can say if we're 100 pips in profit at this stage here, then we can trail our stop loss. If we're 200 pips in profit, then we can trail our stop loss again and bank 100, and if we um, are here, then we can either take profit or anticipate a breakout. I'd recommend just taking profit, quite frankly. And um, there we have it. It's the same if we're going um, short. So, for example, we've got 75 pips difference between our entry and our stop loss. Um, and we've paid off our spread, and we're now 75 pips in profit. 
at this stage here, then we can move our stop loss to break even. As soon as we're 150 uh, pips in profit in total, then we can lock in 75. So as you can see here, we're always one, we're always the equivalent distance between our entry and our stop loss behind the actual price. Okay, you don't need to trial this every day or every week even, but just as soon as we hit that milestone of say 75 pips, which is the same difference between your entry and your stop loss, save your 75 pips in profit, then great, move it to break even. Then if we make another 75 pips profit, then great, bank another, well, bank the 75. And if you're at the bottom of the range, if you haven't taken the whole profit already, then, well, I recommend that you, um, you, you bank once more time, one more time, sorry, so you've essentially trailed uh, twice. Okay, so here we go. Here's Euro versus the Norwegian Krona. Um, this is an underrated currency pair. Another example of um, a rather obscure pair, but, you know, I just treat them equally. Um, they all work pretty much in the same way and behave in the same way from a technical perspective. Okay, so as you can see here, we're anticipating we've got our first test, second test, great. You can see they're whip, quite whiplashy in their interaction with the horizontal level, and we have laid our trap here in the form of a sell order, and we've got our stop loss above it. Then what happens? Sorry, we, well, we randomly spiked in, and this happens. This is why it's great to have your order in in advance because you do get these events where you're just quickly spiked in and then the market just goes down in your favor, okay? It's, it just happens off the back of something. And this is why I really like trying the crosses um, with this strategy a lot more than I do dollar-based pairs. And I'll tell you why later. Okay, so as you can see, we are able to trail this very quickly. Trail once to break even, then trail, well, we could have trailed uh, three times in one day, but of course we'll be not watching the screen, we'll be doing our, our thing, whether it's going to the gym, going out to the park, meeting friends, running another business. Um, we would simply trial this end of the day and we would have made a decent percentage out of it. Um, let's have a look here. I believe we made an 8% gain from this one. This was last year, by the way. Um, a lot's happened between now and then. Okay, so every time this trade ran in our favor, uh, the equivalent distance between our entry and our stop loss, we're able to move our stop another time, and we were able to move this four times, essentially. Had we risked 1% on this trade, we would have made 4%. Had we risked 2%, we would have made 8%. Okay, so this is one example of how we can use this kind of mechanical style of managing the trade and um, essentially getting into the trade in the first place to our advantage in having a very stress-free way of trading. And you can simply just wait let the market do its thing while doing something slightly more interesting than watching the, watching the bars moving all day because there ain't much interesting in that. So I'll, be, I'll be frank with you. <laughs> so here we go. We've got the US dollar versus the Polish Lottie. You might recognize this one from earlier. We had the first test, a random event, the second test, a coincidence, but now we're anticipating the third test at this big number as well. So price action did come back. It filled our order. We had a distance between our entry and our stop loss, and the market, of course, um, turned up, went in our favor. We, made, we managed to trail it once, twice, thrice, and a fourth time where we took profit. Um, for those of you who asked me about price action earlier, sure enough, you can see that we did get our low test bar, British pin bar reversal, whatever you call it. Um, we had it here, but as you can see here, um, from this entry on the level, we were able to move our stop loss to break even, and even trail and try, start thinking about training it by the time we had our setup of price action. So you can see here that thanks to um, getting in on the level, we can get into the move pretty much at the, at the start of it rather than having to mess around waiting for um, price action based setup. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I love price action. I've tried it myself, but it's this style of training that can get you into trades before price action has formed. And at the time when you have, would have waited for like a bullish pin bar reversal, you would typically be able to move your stop loss to break even. Who's to say that you can't move your order on the level to break even and risk what you would have risked on the level on this bullish pin bar reversal and essentially add to your longer term position. Sure enough, if it was a smaller bar, I would have done that, but it wasn't. So I didn't, quite frankly, it was quite a big old bar. And as the target was up here, it would have given me just a one to one uh, trade or 1.5 to one, which isn't really enough for me, to be honest with you. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, look at real-life examples now 
at the markets rather than just talking to you about these wonderful um, setups which look fantastic in hindsight. I'm a real firm believer in just kind of like showing you um, what's happening now rather than just, you know, picture perfect examples which could have been um, just plucked from a, a very nice selection. Okay, so the, the, one of the great ways to really identify these key horizontal levels is looking at the weekly. I'm just going to remove some of these indicators. I was teaching a client earlier and he was very enthusiastic about indicators and um, as you can tell with the tone in my voice, I don't really use them that much. I'm not really that, I'm that happy about them. But anyway, um, as you can see here with the FTSE, I know it's not a currency pair, but let's just pretend it is. You know, we, we trade the FTSE and stocks exactly the same way as we would a currency pair, pair anyway. So looking at this here, we can see that even on the monthly, you can see that the FTSE hasn't breached its all-time high ever. This is the all-time high last met in 2000 when we had the uh, tech bubble. And guess what? That bubble burst. And we've had the credit crunch since. We had the credit crunch in 2007, 2008. And we've gone up since. We're at the top of this long-term range here. Look at it. The FTSE has just been range bound since, well, for the past 15 years, really. past 20 years, sorry. 1995. So pure logic would dictate that it will make abundant sense to sell at the top of the range and to buy at the bottom. So, what I'm simply saying here is if we scale down on a slightly smaller time frame, like on the weekly and on the daily, um, then we've got a potential opportunity to sell on this horizontal level here. And we've got a, a range within a range here. Remember that the FTSE has done nothing but oscillate since uh, 2013 for about two years, looking in the weekly. So, even if we sold at the top of the range here, and our target was halfway down, um, or even all the way down to the bottom of this uh, two-year range, the profit potential is quite handsome. If you're risking, say, um, say let's say 82 points for the sake of convenience, and we're going to, say, close to the bottom here, say 715, 715 divided by 82, that's 8.7%, times that by 2, because I was 2% per trade, and that's 17%. However, if we do get a, a slightly more meaningful correction, and we do see the levels uh, like we have done uh, twice before, um, given that we are just at the top of the long-term range. And, we, and this is in its simplistic form, by the way. We've got about 3,400 points, okay, to the very bottom of this 20-year um, range. Divide that by 82, that's um, a pretty good sum 41 times 82 divides into 3,416 and if you times that by 2 then that uh, divides into 83 times so I'm not saying oh goodness let's pray for the next crash <laughs> I'm simply saying just be aware of this because this is a simple setup which could manifest itself anytime soon I mean markets certainly um, equities um, crash every 5 to 7 years and we're certainly due for one right now. Anyway, let's talk about currencies because this is a currency webinar. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you that flavor, uh, really. And if it was a currency, we'd trade it in exactly the same way. And um, looking at Aussie New Zealand here, I know some of you who had me before, uh, I'm noticing a few familiar names in the room. Uh, Donald um, is one of them. Hi, hi, Donald. I hope you're well. Happy New Year to you. Um, but yeah, looking at this here, another 25-year um, um, extreme here. This is Aussie New Zealand. This two-horse race between the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar. And we're at the bottom of a long-term range here. And as you can see here, it's just been a two-horse race between the Aussie dollar and um, the Kiwi dollar. And guess what? We're at the bottom of this medium long-term, sorry, long-term range here. So it makes sense to buy at the bottom of the range. And certainly um, our clients are long on this one at the moment. And um, I think they're up between 2 and 4%, depending on where they put their stops. Um, but now, I mean, they're looking for a long, really seriously long-term ride into this one. Their stop losses are break-even. But you can see here that the entry was around about here, around about the bottom, depending on um, where they saw the bottom of the market, where it correlated um, of the previous extreme, and they're just simply waiting for it to do its thing. Same with, uh, where else, what else are we going to be looking at here? We're going to look at uh, Pound New Zealand. This is one I just referred to earlier. You can see here with this um, currency pair, you can see that this level 
at uh, two spot 100. I remember taking this short in 2012 in May. I was in Paris back then, and it was a very nice trade because what happened, it just went straight to the bottom. This is a price action based setup then. But more recently, we've had this this validated the level. We had two tests which validated the level, but. Last year, in October last year, we had this whiplash movement up to 2 spot 100, and those people who'd identified it at this level, certainly clients of ours would have, um, off the back of our webinars, which we present on a weekly basis, they would be in this short at the moment. They would have um, anything between 100 and 150 pips difference between the entry and their stop loss, and they'll be rooting for either, some of them would have got out halfway down to the bottom of the range here, like round about here, but others who are slightly more fearless will be looking to take it straight to the bottom of the range, having scaled out um, halfway down the range here. So you can see, regardless of the trades that other people are in, can you see, if you look closer, I'm going to zoom in here, you can see that the profile of the tests are very quick and they are whiplashy. And this is just the kind of test we want really um, for this power zone strategy to really come into its own. And lo and behold, um, as soon as we've got price coming up to this level again, guess what I'm going to do if price comes up to this level again? Well, I'm looking to sell it again. Um, it's as simple as that, really. Um, I don't really care what pounds doing against the US dollar and um, the New Zealand dollar is doing against the US dollar. I just treat every cross pair for its own merits and will trade with story told in front of the charts right in the moment rather than trying to like second guess what the pound is doing against the US dollar and what the um, New Zealand dollar is doing against the US dollar. I know a lot of people fall into analysis paralysis doing this, but I'm just seeing a potential fourth opportunity where we're going to spike up here, up to the top of the range here, and um, we get a sell opportunity off the back of that. Um, I did want to show you... Um, I think it's New Zealand Swiss, my apologies. Yeah, it was New Zealand Swiss. So Aussie Swiss, my apologies. Um, we had, let's forget about the uh, SMB, we had a great level here, fantastic level here, and had an order to sell lined up on this level. But of course, the SMB had other ideas, and we had this move downwards. So unfortunately, <laughs> this one's off the menu for this year, I would say. And... Um, We've got others waiting in the wings, like, for example, the British pound versus the US dollar. We just waited for it to come down to this horizontal level. Um, one spot four eight hundred. well, sorry, one spot four eight fifty eight. You can see here that we've got two isolated tests on this horizontal level. Um, I would actually prefer it to be a cross-currency pair, because if we're looking to go long and short with, um, with the US dollar-based pair, then it really is quite a polarized kind of like um, deliberation as to whether we've got um, risk on or risk off. I mean, if we're looking for um, the British pound to increase in value here, then we obviously want a weakness in the dollar, but the dollar is so strong at the moment, we might not get it. And remember, the British pound might be strong and the US dollar might be strong as well, but it is a two-horse race between who is strongest, the battle between which country is the strongest. Okay, so um, that, that's the fact of the matter. So I'd far rather this was a cross-currency pair, um, but, you know, does the market really care what, what I want to happen? I don't think so. <laughs> so we've got that. I'm going to show um, you, uh, well, one more example before we uh, call it a day. But this really is a style of trading which I would recommend. I mean, you don't get many opportunities, but uh, when you do, it really is worth your weight. It really is. If you look on a lot of these cross-currency pairs, um, you will see that um, not, a lot of them have done nothing but range. Okay? Like this one here. US dollar versus the Hong Kong dollar. I know we've got um, this, this floor. is looks like it's been protected by... Um, by one of the banks, I mean, it's held for, let's have a look here, years, absolutely years. There we go. This level was held since 2003. So, given that it's potentially defended by a bank, then it makes sense to simply bar on the level, just above it, and cash your chips in halfway up the range, 
or at the very top if, you're, if you've got bulls of steel. Okay, but be careful when we're trading with levels defended by the banks because as soon as the bank turns around and says, oh, we're not defending it anymore, you can expect a huge movement and slippage spreads to widen and the bloodbath blood bath to um, essentially follow. Okay, I'm going to deal with questions in just a second. I just want to bring, bring you back to this very quickly. So I do have a special deal on, exclusive to FX Street, and essentially it's the ultimate program, which is our flagship Lazy Trader program, and it's essentially a course which will teach you how to trade from as little as 10 minutes a day on any asset class in any market, had great reviews from this course, and we're adding to it the whole time, valued at $1,997, the online price is 252 but today only we've got it for $100.80. That's it. 60% discount for today only as a webinar special. If you get it tomorrow, it won't cost that. Okay, so you can simply get access to all of our strategies, learn to trade from as little as 10 minutes a day, um, get weekly webinars, market updates, trade ideas. We've got a very cool trader hypnosis audio course, which is the first of its kind in the market. We've got um, special software which helps to pinpoint opportunities. Um, we've got plenty, absolutely loads, and um, training videos to teach you how to trade and analyze markets very, very quickly. And um, certainly, if you're not uh, fully satisfied, you can get a, uh, a full refund, no problem. Okay, so it's just 100 bucks, 60% off today only. And to get this, all you need is go to thelazytrader.com forward slash Forex training and the promo code to use is FX Street Jan in lowercase. So make a note of this. It's for today only. Prices will go up after today, after midnight today, and it's pretty much everything you need if you want to be um, proficient in set and forget trading in the way of the lazy trader. Okay, backed by a cast iron satisfaction guarantee. So that's what is um, what the offer is. We've had gr uh, numerous uh, testimonials. Check out our Forex Peace Army for the independent review site. Um, okay, so I'll keep that on the screen so that you can make a note of the promo code. I'm going to deal with your questions in the meantime. Um, let's have a look here. In terms of price action, by the way, um, I know a lot of you have um, been wondering about that. Um, you can use this strategy in conjunction with price action. If you, for example, if you see a horizontal level, which is the level of a demand, a level of support, and it hasn't been broken, say, in five years, and you've got a buy opportunity on it, you buy on the level, and then you get a bullish pin bar reversal also on the level. What you can do is you can move your stop loss to the low of the bullish pin bar reversal and place another trade at the break of the high of the bullish pin bar reversal with your stop loss um, below the low. So you essentially are adding to the position. You're building a position very quickly. And then, of course, after that, you can uh, buy the first higher low again. So you've added t twice onto what could potentially be a good long-term trade. So that's what I recommend to do in conjunction with price action. And this is exactly what I'm looking to do um, with um, Aussie New Zealand, for example. So just very quickly, we've got here, for those people who bought on the level, that's all very well and good. We did not get a low test bar or a bullish pin bar reversal um, on the level, but what I'm waiting for now is a higher low and for a, um, a bullish pin bar reversal to essentially represent that higher low before going to this, adding to the position. Okay, so somebody said New Zealand dollar. Um, Yep, it's, to be honest with you, New Zealand dollar is, is a bit of a anomaly, really. It's just moving sideways. Um, so it makes sense to simply sell the top of the range to buy the bottom. It's in limbo at the moment. I'm not particularly enthusiastic about this at all. Um, you know, the central bank, New Zealand, say one thing. They want to decrease the price, the value of it. Seasonally, um, the Kiwi, New Zealand dollar is very bullish. Um, we're holding this level just about. It's, t it's too confused. I'm not really that interested in it. I've got my eyes on what I've just basically mentioned to you. Okay, so um, do um, come back to me. Any more questions? If you've got no more questions, then I'm very happy to call it a day. Okay, so covered 
um, the New Zealand uh, versus the US dollar. It's absolutely fine. Okay, but do um, take advantage of this offer if you want. It's going to expire midnight tonight, and um, certainly it's a reward for you who um, bothered to make it to the webinar. Because I do want to obviously reward people who are keen and um, passionate about trading. I'm going to scroll up to see if there's any more questions. Do banks trade the four hourly? Um, quite possibly, I'm not sure. It really depends on the bank. I'm sure there are banks that do. I mean, four hourly is a good compromise between um, end of day trading and intraday trading. Certainly, if you are looking at the four hourly, then I'd recommend looking at the midnight bar. If GM London time, sorry, the midnight bar London time um, has a lot of movement off it. Um, and you'll see that if you're looking at the charts, if you look at the majors and the minors. Especially if it's a bullish pin bar reversal or bearish pin bar reversal. Um, somebody asked, uh, Joe, would it be better to wait for the reversal to occur and then enter? No, sure. I mean, if you're more cautious, then absolutely fine. But of course, you run the risk of missing out on uh, profit potential. And that just goes hand in hand with what I said about uh, waiting for that price action based setup. You can wait for that price action based setup and a reversal on a smaller time frame. Um, but it might not happen. Price might just whiplash off the level and just leave you not in the trade, and the move might just happen without you. Okay, so there are pros and cons. It really does depend on your risk appetite. I mean, we'll fully appreciate everyone's different. The strategy is not for everyone, but it's certainly the best. Um, if you want to just set and forget, walk away and do your thing um, without really having to worry about watching moving bars all day, because I, I can sh certainly think of 101 things I'd rather be doing. Midnight, uh, I refer to midnight as uh, 24 hours GMT, yes. Greenwich Mean Time, 12 o'clock midnight, yeah. Okay, so hopefully see you on the mem in the membership area on Lazy Trader if you take advantage of the ultimate. No love lost if you don't. But, okay, one more question. How many swings before you reach target? It doesn't matter. If you're trailing um, objectively in that mechanical way I taught you, um, say if you've got 50 pips difference between your entry and your stop loss, you trail for every pip, 50 pips profits you have, but 50 pips away from the current price action, then you'll be fine. You can trail below the swings if you want. It's a different style of management. But sometimes you'll, you'll get these ranges where, where, where you don't get any um, cyclicity in them. You'll get these just choppy oscillation. So this is why... Um, I've taught you this rather mechanical style of trading instead of just trading below higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. Okay. Any more questions, folks, or are we good for today? Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure as always. How do I think these days? Uh, well, you know what? I treat every day differently, to be honest with you. Um, I just see the market in exactly the same way. Um, I sell at the top of the range. I buy at the bottom. I I buy <laughs> I buy the the dip in an upward trend, and I sell the rally in a downward trend. That's pretty much what I do, regardless. Okay, thanks, folks. I'll see you next time. If you've got any questions, drop me a line. Rob at the lazytrader.com. Take care. All the best to you.